Okay, so now let's talk about motorcycle oil. And um, first thing to say about motorcycle oil mm. is that we wouldn't give it a different title if it wasn't a different oil. Motorcycles require high levels of zinc and phosphorus for anti-wear protection in a motorcycle engine. Now, you stop and think about it a minute. Motorcycles produce a lot of power in a relatively small engine block and assembly. So they're putting a lot of stress on the components in that engine, and they depend upon good anti-wear additives, which are zinc and phosphorus. So why does that create a problem? Well, it creates a problem because the EPA has decided that for automotive engines, we will reduce zinc and phosphorus for the SN rated motor oils. SM also, but SN is the newest. So these latest rated oils are reduced to 800 parts per million zinc and 800 parts per million phosphorus. Prior to these limits, some oils, not all, but some oils like AMLO would have 1,200 parts per million zinc and phosphorus, which is considerably more than the 800 limit. Now, when it comes to the motorcycle oils, AMLO has exceptionally high levels of zinc and phosphorus in the motorcycle oils. And the reason for that is, is to protect those engines and protect them from, from any kind of wear it take place during the operation. So, we know that you can't go down to the store and buy some latest rated automotive engine oil and run it in your motorcycle. If you do, you'll have accelerated wear in that engine over a period of time. Will it wear it out next week? Probably not. But over a period of time, you're going to start losing compression because it's going to start wearing the rings, you're going to get too much clearance, and you're going to start to get blow by and you're going to get less compression as it starts to wear the, the engine out. So you want high zinc and phosphorus and you want true motorcycle oils. Now the motorcycle oils normally in 1040 and 2050, that's usually fairly straightforward, right? But we actually make 10W30 motorcycle oil with high zinc and phosphorus. That is unique. And we also make a 60 weight motorcycle oil with the same high quality additive package of the advanced motorcycle oil that we have in the 1040 to 2050. So when it comes to motorcycle oils, the complete uh, spread of Amzo products is really unmatched in the industry, especially for synthetic oils. You might find some petroleum based oils out there that would range from 1030 to a 60 weight oil but there's no competitive synthetic oils and motor, true motorcycle oils that carry that with a product that's available. Um, we look at further parts in the motorcycles and you can use our 7590 severe gear or 8090 uh, gear loop in the motorcycle applications. Perfect, works well. There's not, not a large quantity, but it works well. So when you're looking for maximum protection use these Amzoil synthetic motorcycles. Now, I might tell you this, if you're out, you're in some place, you can't find something, and you need oil for your motorcycle, and you really don't see any motorcycle oil, I suggest to you that if you can find it, you pick up some 1540 or 20W50 uh, CI4 plus heavy duty diesel oil. You find that, it's loaded with zinc and phosphorus it's got to be CI4+, plus, not CJ4. The latest diesel oils are CJ4s, guess what? Because some of the diesels now have catalytic converters, the EPA has stepped in and limited the zinc and phosphorus in those oils to 800 parts per million. So there we go, the CJ4 oil is now lower in zinc and phosphorus. So if you go back to the CI4 plus oils, they're high in zinc and phosphorus, so they would make a good motorcycle oil. Okay, so if you're looking around and you see a diesel oil, that's a better bet than buying a 1040 uh, automotive oil, trying to put it in your bike as a, a make stuff. But I will tell you this, it's better to run your bike with 1040 
automotive oil and they're running two quarts low <laughs> of oil and trying to limp it off. Just put whatever you can in there. But if you can find a good diesel oil, it'll do fairly well, especially for the period of time it takes you to get back to where you need to go. Now, one additional thing in these motorcycle oils, the come in the AMSO line of oils, they have a chemical rust inhibitor in the oil. Is that important? Well, for a lot of people who aren't lucky enough to get out and ride their bikes on a weekly basis, the bike may be sitting up a little bit and not being used as frequently as they'd like. Yeah, that anti-rust corrosion chemical inhibitor they put in a motorcycle oil then becomes very valuable because it's, it's keeping your engine and the inside of the engine in pristine condition, not letting it rust or corrode as it sits there. And you might ask yourself, well, how does it corrode? Well, the engine breathes through to the air. And as it breathes through to the air, it every day as temperatures change, what will happen is it, it warms up and the air inside the bike finally warms up, expands, pushes out. Then later, cools down, as it cools down, the volume of air on the inside shrinks, sucks in air from the outside. There's moisture in the outside, every time it does this, it's like a breathing apparatus, but every time that moisture is sucked in, it does not get back out. It will condense inside the engine, so you're getting moisture inside the engine. And I saw Ansel has a video, a good one, on motorcycle maintenance and layout, okay, like you're going to put your motorcycle up for the winter. And the one thing that the mechanic says in there, and this is a guy that went to a big mechanic place, you know, motorcycle place, he says, look, just store your bike where the temperature is even. It doesn't matter if it's even 30 degrees or if it's even 80 degrees. But if you're going to put your bike up for the winter, don't put it where the temperature changes 50 degrees every day because that's when it does this breathing thing and it sucks moisture into the engine. Just put it where it's constant. A lot of people in Florida, where we are, you put it in your garage and it would stay probably within... 10 or 15 degrees, 20 degrees over the whole period of time. Oh, every day. They put blankets on them and heaters sometimes as well. Yeah, keeping them warm. That was Marty said they put blankets and heaters on bikes up north, and that's true. And But it just exemplifies the principle that if you're going to combat moisture, you want the bike to be as steady a temperature as it can, not going up and down, because that's how it literally breathes in air, brings in moisture, condenses it, drops it, and then the next day it pushes out the drier air because it's already condensed the moisture out of it and sucks in another volume of air that has moisture in it. So it's just sitting there bringing in moisture in that kind of condition every day. So avoid that. Now that's exactly the same for classic cars. So lo and behold, we make Z-Rod oil for classic cars. And guess what? It's got rust inhibitors in it. So if you're talking to people with classic cars and go, well, I don't know that I really need a synthetic oil for my classic car, and you should go with that in this direction. You'd say, well, I'm not talking about whether you crank it up to 6,000 RPM and you need protection because of performance. I'm talking about the fact that this classic car is not run every day and your regular petroleum oils do not prevent rust. And what do you mean? You put oil on stuff, it'll keep it from rusting, right? Well, will it? I'll give you an example. If I have water here, laying on this table over here, and I take some oil, a spoon of oil, and I pour it onto the water, okay? Will the oil go through the water to the surface of the table and lift the water? Or will the oil float on top of the water? What do you think? Floats. floats. Every time it floats. So I got a sheen of petroleum oil on the inside of my engine. I'm good and protected, right? Mm -hmm. I start to form bubbles of condensation. What happens to the oil on the metal surface? It's lifted off onto the top of the water, right? Now there's no oil there and the droplet may go down but it just stripped the oil off of this surface. Now I have a wet surface, iron, oxygen, I'm going to have rust. Corrosion right there. Now, if I have a rust inhibitor that's intentionally put in the oil and it coats on the surface, then what happens? It's like water forming on wax on the hood of a car. It beads up, runs off, leaves the protective coating on the metal. So don't ever be fooled that regular petroleum will actually stop rust. It doesn't. Now, they do put admins in it, 
You can put additives into a petroleum oil and it'll stick to the surface. Now there's one other tremendous advantage in amsoil. It's just tremendous advantage. And that's our component of diester that's in the oil. Esters are, in the chemistry world, they're called highly polar molecules. And what that means, they have a polarity. People understand that in a magnet, you have a negative and a positive end on the magnet. Well, just assume that the iron over here, steel, tends to have a negative charge. And that the, uh, this ester floating down through here has a very high positive. Where's it going to go? Over here, right? The esters stick, they have a polarity, they stick to the surface. Once that ester has coated that surface, there is no water that has the ability to strip it off of the surface. Yeah. So the ester acts like a paint, almost, that is stuck to the surface. Consequently, years ago, when AMSO was really a 100% ester-based oil, before it became a, a blend of PAO and ester, um, you could truthfully say that you would never ever have a dry start in an engine because you couldn't get the ester off the surfaces. So it'd start up with the stuff clinging on there and you could never get it off. In fact, it was hard to ever get a really accurate oil level in the engine because you had to park it on a level surface and let it sit overnight to get a pretty accurate indication because the ester stuck so well in the engine that it didn't drain down very fast. You know, it finally would drain down most of it, it still leave that surface. So esters are just chemical marvels. When they use them, when they call them a stripping agent, when you have certain type of esters, they use as solvents to strip stuff. The reason they can strip stuff off of metal, paint, all kinds of stuff, is their polarity is so strong to the metal that they literally go under, work their way down through, under the stuff that's on top, and then begin to accumulate under and just lift it up. So when you use these ester-based solvents, they'll strip paint right off of metal. Just lift it up, <coughs> lift it up. So it's those kind of esters, the diesters are called, dibasic esters and AMSOIL, that really give a leg up in this product. AMSOIL's never stopped using them. They're terrific products. And that's why when we talk about engines that have a lot of buildup from petroleum, and we put in our signature series oil that has an ester component in it, and we talk about you got to be careful because it's a very aggressive cleaner because of the esters. The esters are stripping and cleaning. Well, they're cleaning that engine, and you give it enough time to run, and pretty soon that engine's going to be just pristine. Every metal surface in it's going to be clean because the esters, everywhere they can get to, they remove anything from the surface and they take its place. So they really, really clean an engine. But you got to be careful if that engine's <laughs> loaded with sludge. It's going to clean it one way or the other, and down she goes into the oil pans. So that's for a whole different story, a different talk. But the motorcycle oils, you cannot beat them. They really are the, the premium motor oil for motorcycles in the business. And, and you can say that outright without blinking an eye. Now, I believe Harley Davidson makes pretty good Screaming Eagle oil for their synthetic. If they, they don't make it. They have, I think, a company in New Jersey, whoever it is, make it for them. But here's the point. They spent some money to do it. Yeah. And those products cost quite a bit of money. So you can't say to somebody, well, don't use that Harley Davidson synthetic because that stuff's just trash. No, it's a decent synthetic. But what you can say, it's a decent synthetic. Our synthetic is a premium synthetic. It's the best one in the marketplace. Why? We're the only guys left using esters. There's nobody else using those in those applications. So that is a silver bullet, those ester molecules that are still used in there. Now the, the additive package, the rest of it, high zinc, high phosphorus, excellent additive package, anti-foaming agents, which you need because motorcycles pound that oil quite a bit and you don't need any extra foaming going on. Some of them have um, roller bearings uh, that you have in Harleys. And the important thing about roller bearings is remember this, a true roller bearing can, you can take an eyedropper and apply oil into a roller bearing, two or three drops into a, a, a nice machine roller bearing, and it's fully lubricated. They don't need a lot of oil. What they need is an exceptionally good thin oil. Roller bearings don't need real thick oil. So the Harley gets you in a bind because they give you roller bearings, and then the old bikes, they tell you, well, 
you got to run a 60 or 70 wave oil in here or you're going to lose compression because the bike's ran so hot. Well, the problem with that is I got this mud that I'm trying to throw in here, trying to keep compression, and it's not really good for roller bearings. Thick oil does not do a good job of lubricating roller bearings. Nice, thin layer coat does. So you come along now with a good synthetic that puts a nice thin coating on there and gets away with not losing compression because it doesn't thin out at high temperatures, you got the best of both worlds. Your roller bearings are cooking just like you want them. They're going like the devil and you're getting good lubrication. The engine's running cool and you're not losing compression. So it's not a mystery. You need a good oil that can handle high temperatures and air-cooled engine. Now real quick, you got your nice big beautiful um, water-cooled bike. Okay, now most of the time those water-cooled bikes can handle just a 10W40 because they don't run as high temperatures. But Marty was telling me how high the temperature runs on his bike. If you start getting up over, you know, 210 degrees or so on your thermostat on those bikes, you might as well just go ahead and go to the 2050 because those kind of temperatures is not what the water-cooled bike was the expectation of making the 1040 oil for a water-cooled bike. That's running hotter than expected, so just step up to the 2050, maximum protection. Uh, don't burn your ankles. Have a good day. <laughs> All right, so that's motorcycle oil, hot drive oil. We didn't, only we didn't talk about two cycle oils or marine engine oil, but we'll get to those another time. And that's the name of that tune.